Hi, my name is Barbara Chamberlain. I'm with New Mexico State University's Learning Games Lab, and this is an abbreviated version of a presentation we gave for the Las Cruces Public School District called Improving Academic Performance by Using Extra Games. Let me tell you a little bit about the Learning Games Lab. We are primarily a development shop. We develop educational media on a wide range of topics, math, science, health, food safety, nutrition, you name it. And our Learning Games Lab is not only the name we refer to for our development team, but it's it's a space where we test the games that are under development. We do research on commercially available games, and that's really kind of how we got into extra gaming, was that in working with kids and in testing our games and doing our own research, we found that games that had non-standard controllers, controllers where you didn't sit and use your thumbs, actually were so incredibly popular. This included games like Donkey Konga, where you hit the drums, or Guitar Hero, or Rock Band, or Dance Dance Revolution, also called DDR with the mat, that not only were they popular, Popular, but we found that uh, families that would come and pick up their kids, these are the games they could play together. And all of a sudden, grandparents could play on the same kind of playing field as kids, and it's something they could engage in together. We also had to buy some room fans and air freshener because the kids were working up quite a sweat. And we said, okay, there's something here worth looking into. So a couple of years ago, we applied for and received a grant from USDA on obesity prevention. And as part of the obesity prevention, Prevention work, we're doing research on extra games. A lot of people also call these active games, games that encourage physical activity. And we're leading a group of, of researchers who are looking at physiological or physical effects, social impacts, psychosocial impacts, like what this does for self esteem or your ability to think you can get more activity and that sort of thing. And this has led to extragamesunlocked.org, which is a website we have created to help everyday normal real people use extra games. Which game do I want? Which audience? Give me some case studies of what has worked. And we found some really in interesting things along the way. But first, I mentioned we are on obesity grant, so let's just let's just talk about that first. This is a body mass index graph. You have your height on the left in this chart. It goes from four foot ten to six foot six, and your weight along the bottom. So the idea is you you find your height on the left and you follow the line over to your weight along the bottom. Now this section here, if you're in that white section to the left, that's considered underweight. If you're in this section here, you're normal. The, the next color blue section is overweight category, and this kind of dark blue triangle is obese. Now the reason I want to talk to you about this is because that dot there is me. My dot is fully grounded in the obese section. Now I want to tell you that for a couple of reasons. First is that if you have ever had your dot in the OB section like mine has been, you are part of a unique group of people that has knowledge that, that people who don't have a dot outside that can't really fully comprehend, they can't fully understand. And that is that if your dot has ever been in this dark blue section, you understand, you know how incredibly difficult it is to get the dot out of that section. Now that's not what we're talking about in extra games, that's not what we're talking about today. The point of this presentation is not at all to talk about getting dots out of that triangle. But because I know how complex, how hard, how many times I have to try, how many solutions I have to try, how 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 I'm just going to have to keep working until I get my dot out of that section. What I have learned through this process is is I shouldn't be focusing my time, what maybe I can help people the most, is not to get dots out of that section, but it's to get everybody else's dots from moving into that section. That's what I'm interested in committing to, is keeping as many dots as I can out of that section. And it's possible. Now, kids ages 2 to 18 need 60 minutes moderate to physical, vig vigorous physical activity every day. This isn't for weight loss. This, we are just talking about physical activity. This is just to keep those dots from moving into that section. 60 minutes every day. And adults, we need at least 30 minutes. <clears throat> Now, what I want to talk specific to this presentation is academic performance. As academic performance, you have to have the content, the reading, the writing, the mathematics, scientific inquiry, music, physical education, which is a content area as much as an activity. But academic performance also depends on other things like attendance. Students have to be at school to be able to learn from it. Study skills, their health has to be good. All of these things impact academic performance. And what we have noticed in our work with extra games is we have seen a tremendous amount of potential for improving 
the academic performance for extra games. This is in addition to just the physical activity that we know they should be getting anyway. So let's take a look at what some of the research tells us just about physical fitness and academics. A study at University of Illinois found a negative correlation between BMI and math scores, meaning the higher that body mass index is, the lower the math score is. A, a larger study of third and fifth grade students, about 260 kids, found that kids who are physically fit are more likely to perform well on standardized exams. We see that kind of finding over and over again. For example, in California state exams in 2004, they found a positive relationship between test scores and fitness. And this was for men and for women. West Virginia fifth graders, almost 2,000 kids, they measured the BMI, the, looked at the gender, they looked at meal program status, aerobic capacity, and effects on standardized exams. The reason this is interesting is they found the only impact on standardized exams that any of those things they measured was aerobic capacity. So that meant even if the BMI was higher and the child was heavier, if they had the ability to have and perform exercise, they had that aerobic capacity, they would have a higher standardized exam score. Massachusetts, again, this is what the larger group of kids, larger range of kids, kindergarten through 12, they found that the odds of pace passing a state math and English exams improved with the number of fitness exams. So what we're clearly seeing is that physical fitness and academics is related. At least physical fitness and the ability to perform on tests is related. Okay, let's take a look at um, active video games and activity. The nice thing about active video games, and these are games that encourage physical activity, is that the enjoyment of the intervention is higher. We're seeing that game exertion is not a deterrent. That means if given the opportunity to play a regular old game where they'll sit and play, or a game where they're up and being active, the kids are not deterred. They do not lean away from the active games. In many ways, they prefer it. We also see with active video games many different instances where attendance and participation is increased by using them in a program, and certainly the perceived exertion is lower. While the user is playing the game, they are working out and they're getting better exercise than they feel like they are receiving. Continuing on this trend, many games increase energy expenditure from sedentary to light or moderate levels. Now, that's not to the vigorous levels that's recommended, but that's okay. Sedentary to moderate is a very good change. One of the most important messages we can do in this field is to replace sedentary, sitting on your butt activity with something that's active. And of course, games that require upper and lower limb movement, something where you're using your whole body, these really do offer the opportunity to achieve those vigorous physical activity levels. Okay, so we know that we that physical activity is related positively to academic performance. We know that video games, active video games, are a way to get those physical activity. What about the other stuff going on in the classroom? In this study, they did energizers. These were short little physical activity breaks. They found that these energy uh, these energizers throughout the day had a positive effect on physical activity, but they also increased on-task classroom behavior. The Take 10 activity, a great national initiative for bursts of 10-minute activity throughout the day, they found that the physical activity, when it was integrated with the academic curriculum, meaning they're teaching content while they're getting physical activity, they could promote the kind of energy expenditure among school-aged children that was meaningful. Uh, an interesting study in Vern Patrick Elementary in Oregon. They took a couple different fourth grade classes, gave one of them extra games. They could play at whatever time they wanted to when it was raining or to prepare for a test or um, one student finishes before the other. They found that the extra gaming kids had fewer absences than their non-extra gaming cohorts and fewer absences than they did before the extra gaming study. It increased leisure reading, decreased negative behaviors like acting out in the classroom, and then it also provided additional skills. At a four-week program in California. And I'll tell you, in this field, four weeks is such a short intervention. People kind of think four weeks. Pfft, what can you do in four weeks? They improved their attendance and math scores in such a short program in California. Mm -hmm. We used extra games at a local elementary school and had some, some surprising results. It was great news. Let's take a look. It's not a dance class. And it's not a formal PE class, but every student at this elementary school is dancing every morning. The Exer game Just Dance gives players on the Wii the ability to dance along with an on-screen host. Normally, up to four players hold the Wii motes, but with this game, even those without the controls can dance along. Good morning, Conley Colts. 
I'm Patricia. And I'm Brandy. Media students at the school start their day by broadcasting the game over the school's closed-circuit television system school-wide. The Exer game intervention at Conley Elementary has many positive impacts. Once you get kids active, you, got, you have those uh, neurons and their brains activated, they're going to think a little clearer. It builds a feeling of positive climate, collaboration, and camaraderie because every child in the building, from our two-year-olds in DD Pre, all the way up to our 11 and 12-year-olds in fifth grade, are doing this. Having just dance in a classroom is very energetic and it's very fun for the students and teachers. Part of the program's success has been buy-in from the teachers. We have found that if the teachers participate, the students are going to participate just as well. And it's just as important for teachers to be participating. Though the Exer Gaming program is in its early stages, Conley staff have noticed some unexpected results. I think attendance, academics, and participation have improved because of the Exer Gaming, because of the excitement, and the fact that we're doing it first thing in the morning. The kids don't want to miss out. The work at Conley has positive implications for other schools as well. But I think administrators really need to hear it's okay to give two, three, four minutes to doing something that's going to get those synapses firing, that's going to get the blood and the nutrients flowing through the body, particularly to the brain. And what we're seeing is this starts them ready for the day. Celsa was inspired to try this Exer game intervention by researchers at New Mexico State University who are investigating using Exer games with different audiences. It's really exciting all of the research that we're doing right now with Exer games. Um, we're looking into Exer games as learning tools. Can using an Exer game before a spelling test or a math test, can that improve scores? We're looking into what time of day is the best time to use an Exer game? When are students the most responsive? Is that in the morning? Is that after lunch? Or is that in the afternoon? We're looking into Exer games reducing absences. Do students want to come to school on an Exer game day as opposed to another day? When are absences the least? Um, we're looking into comparing extra games versus a traditional activity. We have a school that's using pedometers to do that. What has the most step count? So that's exciting. There's so many possibilities out there. Um, I just love all this research that we're doing. It's, it's really great. For more information on how you can implement a program like this in your school, visit www.exergamesunlocked.org. So some of what I think is most interesting research is that while we're, we're going for 30 minutes, at least for us in adults, what we're finding is that 10 three-minute bouts or three um, 10 minute bouts can be just as effective and have some of the same beneficial outcomes as one 30 minute activity. Okay, so let's do the math as it concerns kids. Kids we know are going to get 60 minutes a day. We want them to get 60 minutes a day. Let's just talk about the five days a week we have them in class. That's 300 minutes needed on a Monday to Friday basis. At least here locally in Las Cruces, they get um, two 20-minute sessions of physical education a week. Recess, they can get 70 minutes a week if they actually are out there moving and getting exercise during weekend. And, and let's not give parents the responsibility of giving their kids 60 minutes a day, but let's see if 20 minutes walking around the grocery store, playing, walking around school, let's see if we can have them get 20 daily minutes at home. That'll put it up to 100 minutes a week. Now, if the kids walk to school, not every day, just twice a week, such as the great walking to school program, programs that we're seeing. Twice a week they're going to walk to school, that's 40 minutes right there. That means we can bring our kids into their 60 minutes a day, the weekly average, if we just get them to move 10 minutes a day in the classroom. That's it. 10 minutes out of an entire classroom period will bring them up to that 300 minutes needed. And extra games can be an extremely efficient way to give them those 10 minutes. Now what exactly are active video games or extra games and how can I use them? There's a lot of active games out there. There's some commercially available systems, light walls and, and bikes that you can hook up, amazing things. What I want to talk about here is just the things that we could go to our local store and buy today. And fortunately, there's three major consoles now that are available to us. Certainly the Wii, which have Wiimotes, little handheld Wiimotes. Those have been out for a couple of years now. Very well-known extra game. PlayStation Move. PlayStation uh, 3, those out last year. They, at Christmas last year, released the Move, which is a new handheld controller that if you already have that PlayStation 3 you can just plug it right in handheld controller that works similar to Wiimote that brings it that full body movement the other interesting news is the Xbox the um, Xbox 360 they released last Christmas a Kinect which is a controller if you already have the Xbox you just plug that controller in and it's a camera that looks at you 
and you can do full body movement. What's great about the Xbox Connect is you don't have any controllers in your hand. Your whole body is the controller. What's nice about this is whether you're buying a new system and you can buy any of these packages and there's titles available or if you have one of the latest models of PlayStation or Xbox you can just buy the controller and enhance what you already have. Now if we were in a workshop I'd say let's play and we'd get out there and we'd look at some of the great dancing games and great games. You can go to Extra Games Unlocked and see some of our recommendations. If you don't have the opportunity to play, but you have friends that have any of these systems, you know, invite yourself over to their house, take a crock pot of soup, and see if you can have a night. Once you start playing these games, you understand the potential they have for ease of use in the classroom and short bouts of activity. Here's an example of what I would buy for you if I were buying you a Wii. About $430, you get your standard bundle, your console, which comes with a game, one Wiimote controller, and then one nunchuck, another controller. We think you're going to need at least three other Wiimotes and an extra nunchuck. And then because these Wiimotes use alkaline batteries, you actually can get these rechargeable batteries in a charging station. We just love them. That way you don't have to swap the batteries out. Some of our games that we like right now, Just Dance 2 is very good, Just Dance Kids, Zumba Fitness. Um, that's the other nice thing about these console games is you can go into any of the big box stores and say, I'm looking for a game that gets me up and moving. And the sales folks can help you out. Now, if you already have a PlayStation 3 or if you want to go the PlayStation 3 route, the bundle now comes with the Blade PlayStation 3, the console, the wireless controller, which is just a regular old thumb-based controller, and then the Move controller, as well as the eye camera that you need. We think you're going to want a second Move controller and then a charger for that. And one of the games we like for that is Racket Sports. Now, if you already have the PlayStation 3 console, you'll just need to buy the little controller. The controller is that little thing with the little lighted ball on the end. On the Microsoft end, if you want to go with the Microsoft 360, if you're buying, you don't have anything, you buy the Microsoft 360, the Xbox 360, that bundle right now comes with the console as well as the Kinect and a game for $300. We really like Zumba Fitness. We also like Dance Central. This is one of the newer ones, so new games are coming out all the time for that. So... Let's make sense of all of this. Think about when you're integrating it into your classroom first, how do you want to use it? Are you setting it up in stations where you want to have five stations the kids cycle about or you want to have one game console that you can room with a group, use with a group of people? It has a lot of potential there, but just know what your goals are. And to do that, what will you need in terms of space? How many games? Do you need a projector to project it on the wall or are you going to plug it into the TV? What are your goals? Is it just to add activity throughout the day? If so, that's a great goal. Maybe your goals are to increase attendance or participation from parents at a parent's night or to increase test scores. Think about what those goals are so that you will know if you are successful. Now, I quoted a lot of research earlier, and I wanted to give you the, the research here. I believe on the Extra Games Unlocked website, you can download this presentation, which has that text um, text more in depth if you want to go and look at some of those resources yourself. Thanks so much for your attention. I, I really do see a lot of potential for academic performance and I know at the, in the worst case scenario you're going to be helping kids get the activity they need. In the best case scenario I think we're going to see the way classroom instruction has changed. Thank you.